It's the 1st of December 2018. It's cold. I'm about to eat an ice cream and then we're going to talk about the November 2018 solar stats here in the UK. Ah, oh, yes, I love the Maxi Bonds. Right, so as mentioned, we're going to be talking about my solar stats for November 2018 based on my um, 9 kilowatt solar array here in the UK. And wow, this month has been super crappy. Um, so, as usual, we start off with the, I guess, the high level information in terms of prediction. So, we had, um, based on the installers' estimates, when they did their prediction, they predicted uh, 330 kilowatts for uh, November. My estimates were 280. And my actual generation this month was 287.51 kilowatt hours. So, better than I predicted. So again, the, the common theme is somewhere in the middle, which is good. Um, so, obviously with the battery, obviously having the Tesla Powerwall 2, I was able to consume pretty much all of that. So 283.6 uh, kilowatts, I was able to consume, obviously just exported uh, a small amount. Obviously with this bad weather, it's been so gloomy and cloudy pretty much every single day. Uh, obviously the battery hasn't really been getting full. I think at the beginning of the month, it didn't do too bad. Uh, and we'll check on the graphs in a moment. But obviously there's hardly any surplus that went into the eddy for heating the hot water. So I've been heating hot water on gas most of the time, but for, somehow by some miracle, five kilowatt hours was able to dribble in uh, via the editor hot water over the month but again not too much but if we look at November in terms of what that 287.51 kilowatts means uh, in terms of financial kind of uh, inputs so I get about £11.30 from the feed-in tariff I will get £7.53 from the export tariff I also was obviously not having to buy electricity for those 287.51 kilowatts. So based on the current uh, electricity prices, that also saves me £29.55, pence, which basically means the total benefit for me this month uh, from a financial perspective was £48.38. So that's what's going uh, it's into the piggy bank to help pay back uh, the solar system. One of the things actually I'll just mention here, since we're talking about electricity, I'd mentioned in previous videos that I'd moved um, from Eon to a company called Outfoxer Market. If you follow me on Twitter and if you looked at some of the other videos, uh, it's not been a very uh, pretty party there. They've moved to this weird direct debit scheme where they're charging more in the winter and less in the summer to kind of try and balance out real people's usage. Uh, but the way they've gone about it wasn't very good. Um, they've Put the prices up and they also announced just recently another price increase in uh, January so I've moved or in the process of moving over to Octopus Energy so that my um, transfer should happen on the 4th of um, December so just a few days away and we should be on Octopus so the the unit rate is a little bit higher um, well, that it was at the time with uh, Outfox and Market. I haven't checked what it is now. Um, but it's also a fixed, it's got some fixed tariff options. And I might also look at their Go tariff, which is basically an economy for tariff. So you have to, obviously have to get a meter changed out, etc. But what I'm thinking about doing is seeing as um, obviously solar production isn't that great during the winter months, I can kind of utilize the fact I have a battery and for four hours in the early morning, Kind of pull some electricity from the grid and store it in the battery uh, to then use um, when obviously electricity is more expensive. So if I do that, mm. um, we'll cover that off in a separate video. But if you're interested in moving to um, Octopus Energy, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if you click that link, um, we both will benefit uh, by £50 
credit once you've signed up. So again, it's, it's a freebie and if you're going to do it anyway, then we might as well both benefit. So thank you very much for that. So um, in terms of electricity in the power wall, uh, I can't really tell you too much because the, the Tesla app doesn't really give you that kind of statistics. Um, I did have a meeting um, just the other day where a Tesla rep came to my house, looked at the battery install, we had a good discussion about how things are performing, some things I'd like to, to see as part of their power wall partnership program. Um, they also said that um, hopefully in the UK, the backup uh, gateway should be available early next year. So we'll see what that's going to be in terms of cost wise to island the house. So if there's a power cut, we can be fully self-sufficient off the, the battery. Um, but basically the, the Tesla app says that I was 38% self-sufficient this month based on 15% 15, 15 from the power wall and 23% from solar. So I think that number's a little bit off. Uh, I trust the solar edge numbers a little bit more. Um, so let's um, swap to the screen and uh, then we can discuss what this is all about. So let me just get logged in so that we can uh, show you what's going on here. Now, if you remember, one of the things that I'd like in an ideal world, but I wasn't sure how feasible it's gonna be was to have the ability that during the winter months it'd be kind of 50 50 so we know the weather's uh, not brilliant but um hopefully the solar could could cover half of my electricity costs uh, unfortunately that hasn't been the case this month but it's not been too bad so if we uh, switch over to the screen now so you guys can see what's going on so as, you, as i mentioned already 287.51 kilowatt hours were generated. I consumed 99% of that, so only a, a very small export of 3.9 kilowatt hours. But in terms of the actual self-consumption, um, I actually used 720.1 kilowatt hours. So I was 39% um, self-sufficient. Actually not too uh, far different from the Tesla app, I guess. I just thought it was gonna be about 40. Uh, but still, 40% uh, self-generation is not too bad. A couple of things that kind of equate to that for me is um, my wife had been off work uh, for a week because she hadn't been very well. So obviously more electricity was being consumed and obviously it's getting really dark and gloomy here in the UK. So lights have been on a lot. Pretty much anything after the kind of second um, of November has kind of go, gone down the hill a little bit. So you can see that I imported 436.5 kilowatt hours. So if you look at the um, graph, you can see my usage is kind of averaged out probably around ooh, nine kilowatt hours a day, something like that, um, that I've had to import. Um, and you can see there's been such a variation in um, solar generation. So. Let's go through a couple of days starting at the beginning of the month so you can kind of see how things worked out. So you can see kind of coming in to the beginning of November, the power wall obviously had some electricity in because I wasn't doing anything, uh, having to pull anything from the grid. So that was all working really well. Then we see obviously some uh, limited amounts of solar but as soon as it kind of got to the afternoon, that's probably when the dishwasher and washing machine and stuff's gone on, uh, I'm pulling from the grid straight away. And then that kind of seemed like a little first day blip and I was hopeful that um, when the second came, we had a really nice solar day. So really what I was looking forward to is those nice cold winter days that you get that have no clouds and no sun. But obviously one of the things that's obvious that I didn't actually, I guess, never really thought about before when I was getting the solar system is that obviously in the winter, even if the sky is clear and the sun is shining, it's a lot lower. So it has to get much further through to the day until it's um, hitting the panels. So in the, in the morning, it's really hardly, I mean, obviously the, the, the panels are lighting up, um, but it, the sun really isn't in a good position to give it any real direct light. That doesn't really happen until uh, it must be half eleven-ish, and then by two, it's it's too late. It's kind of gone 
around the house and, it, and it's going down. But as you can see, we, we got a good amount of um, electricity generated on the second. So obviously that meant the power wall uh, had a good charge in it. So it kept us going through the night and, and into the morning. Then we were good again. To, um, so we had a couple of bursts of solar. So we were quite good until about half 11 on the third. And that was when it was kind of like the last day, I think that the, the power was ever full. Then for the rest of the month, very little generation. And obviously with the lights on and um, electricity, um, being required because it gets dark at like four o'clock or what have you. Obviously being in the office, we've got the lights on and the lights on in the house. But as you can see, we go through the rest of the month um, and it's pretty much the same story. So during the day, a little bit of power is going into uh, the battery, um, but then it's quickly being utilized. So, you know, by four o'clock, it's kind of empty again. But yeah, so that's kind of pretty much how things sit. Um, so as we can see the little graph here, September was still our uh, best month so far, obviously, and it's kind of been going down. So I'm really looking forward, uh, so I think it's 21st of December, is it? That is the shortest day. So any time after that, then the, the sun is gonna slowly be climbing up in the sky again. So I'm assuming that November will, or sorry, December will be worse uh, than November but we'll obviously see what happens. I'm still happy uh, with the performance though. Uh, I am kind of surprised. I guess I never really paid that much attention to the weather before, uh, but you really do realize when you're looking at this information more closely, that the real difference between you know October and November and perhaps December is gonna be similar. Um, but yes, I hope these videos continue to be helpful and, and you can follow along and see how the system it is working. Um, so again, for me, the fact that um, you know I end up kind of forty percent um, self-sufficient, sixty percent having to import, I'm still pretty happy with that. So obviously there'll be some more videos in between now uh, and the new year. But I wish you a great Christmas uh, in between this and the next uh, solar update video, and I will catch you. In, uh, on the 1st of January-ish, when we talk about the December stats. So, thanks very much. And again, if you're thinking about um, change electricity provider, check out Octopus Energy. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave some comments, say why, make some recommendations, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek-type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.